Another shooting in a busy public place has claimed the life of a young man. Multiple shots were fired, killing 23-year-old Michael Nguyen, who was known to police. With most street gangs, it's a small geographical footprint, but in, with this particular group, uh, their criminal footprint was quite large and it spanned right across the city for the most part, and beyond the city, yes. Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about the Asian gangs that were involved in the war between Alexandra Park and Regent Park. More specifically, the war between the sick thugs and the Project Originals, and also the crazy story of how the police uncovered the history of the beef between them and solved the murder of one of the most famous people associated with these Asian gangs, Premier Huang, aka Primo. I'll talk more about him and the insane story behind how all of this information became uncovered later on in the video. But first I'll get a quick backstory of the beef and the Asian gangs out of the way. The Asian gangs involved were the Chin Pack from Regent Park aligned with the Sick Thugs, and the Asian Assassins from Alexandra Park aligned with the Project Originals. So it was the Sick Thugs and the Chin Pack from Regent Park versus PO aka Project Originals and the Asian Assassins from Alexandra Park. Both the Asian Assassins and the Chin Pack are said to be street level gangs that are connected to more major traditional criminal organizations such as the Triads, which is a major Chinese criminal organization that originated in China and spreads all across the world and has its own sub-gangs and large Chinese populations all across North America, South America, Europe and Asia. The Triads are said to recruit them to perform work such as drug distribution and to be the muscle on the streets in general, to protect their drug trade and potentially infiltrate rival markets. However, that doesn't mean that they don't have any influence in the streets. Police say that their footprint is large and it spans across the city, and even beyond the city. Police also say that all of these gangs, the Asian Assassins, Chin Pak, PO, and Sick Thugs, showcase a much more graduated level of gang subculture activity than what they've dealt with in the past, and that the Toronto Police is increasing enforcement efforts in the areas affected as a result of this. Both the Chin Pak and the Asian Assassins started off with Chinese and Vietnamese teenagers from Regent Park and Alexandra Park at the ages of only 14 to 15 when they created their own street gangs. The beef between PO and the Sick Thugs has been going on since the 90s. It's been a long and violent war over territorial control, since they are both large blocks that are very near to each other. It's not just those gangs from those areas that beef either. All of Regent and all of Alexandra seem to have beef with each other, since MG4L and Halal gang were beefing as well. The Chin Pak and Asian Assassins are well respected by their blocks, with Vanali Stacks, a rapper that claims P.O. constantly shouting out Premier Huang from the Asian Assassins. He's more well known by the name Primo, Hence why Primo Gang is constantly shouted out in their songs. Primo gang, ay, Primo gang, ay, Primo gang. Their op sometimes make references to his murder in their songs as well, such as YH's line, two in him, one in his bay, referring to the double homicide which resulted in Primo's and his girlfriend's death. Vanali Stacks and Primo always had a good relationship. They even made 50 grand each in a single month, resulting in making a lot of people really mad. Probably since if they weren't making that much before, they obviously had to cut into someone else's market to make the extra money. And making money off of someone else's market means that you're cutting into their money. Pretty interesting stuff. Now let's get into the story of how the police uncovered the history of the war between the Chin Pak and the Asian Assassins and solved the double homicide of Primo and his girlfriend. It all started with Primo and his girlfriend's double murder back in January of 2014 in Richmond Hill, where they had been killed by a 23 year old man named Timothy Lee at only 16 and 18 years old. Timothy Lee was the main suspect for the police when talking about the double homicide. At the end of the same year, in December, the York police started a four month long operation where they used a controversial technique regarded by the police as Mr. Big to target their suspect, Timothy Lee. It involves an undercover police operation that is led by a fictional leader of a fake criminal organization. The suspect is usually hired as a criminal associate and at the same time, Undercover officers try to gain his or her trust before using a variety of strategies to get a confession out of the suspect. This investigation, however, had a significant variation. Investigators renamed the tactic as Mr. Mentor, as it involves a fake criminal who acts as a mentor to the suspect, and attempts to guide the suspect to a confession. These types of undercover operations are commonly criticized since many people don't find it ethical for police to be doing it and others claim that the truthfulness of the confession could be compromised. But apparently in this case, it still got the job done. Let's continue with the story. Timothy Lee had a girlfriend at the time whose name is Carolyn Law. The police had discovered that she had a great interest in designer clothing and they figured that they could use that to try and get access to Lee, which is exactly what they did. 
Carol and Law worked at Michael Kors at the time, so they sent an undercover policewoman to talk to her, buy a couple things, and eventually befriend her. Soon after, they became friends. The undercover cop presented her with a job offer as an executive concierge, where she would provide entertainment services for international guests that visit Toronto. She would be booking fancy dinners, concerts, and Toronto Raptor games. Later in the month, Carol and Law and her boyfriend, the suspect, Timothy Lee, were invited to a Christmas dinner at the keg where they would be eating with a guest list filled with undercover cops acting like criminals. This is where the operation really started. During the dinner, the undercover cops were trying to employ Timothy to join their criminal activities, since he was jobless at the time. Things were moving quickly after that. The undercover cops took Lee to a Toronto Raptors game, where they would win a signed Terrence Ross jersey for him at an auction. After the game, the undercover cops really began to start applying pressure and convinced him to join their criminal organization. Lee accepted and was teamed up with an undercover agent who went by the fake name Michael. The undercover cops would constantly be giving him fake scenarios to make him believe that the criminal group was legit and to ensure that there was no suspicion coming from Lee. Over the past couple of months, he would be engaging in fake robberies, fights, and acts of fraud. During that time, Lee and his undercover agent friend, Michael, grew really close and became best friends. It got to a point where Lee was venting about all of his family history and problems to Michael, explaining how both of his parents died at a young age, his mother from cancer and his father from alcoholism, and how his sister didn't give him his fair share of their inheritance and was wasting it all on stupid shit. Lee felt like people had taken advantage of him his whole life, including one time when he was 14 years old and his own friends broke in and robbed his house while his mom was suffering from cancer. That's pretty fucked up. Eventually, Lee and Michael went on a trip to Niagara Falls together, where they had gotten stopped by the police and after checking Lee's ID, the officer had informed him that the York police had a request for him to be interviewed in regard to a homicide investigation. After this, the undercover cops had hatched a fake plan to send him to Calgary while someone else would take the charges. However, Michael had told Lee that in order for this plan to work, the guy taking the fall for him would need to know all the details about the killing, so that it would be believable when he's turning himself in. And that's when Lee confessed to the murder of Primo and his girlfriend, in intense detail, and that's also when he would get snaked by his best friend. He explains that he was contacted by and got in touch with one of his high school friends, named Pham. He said that he and all of his friends were quote unquote broke as shit, while Pham was whipping a nice ass Benz. He says that Pham sold him a dream of selling drugs and making mountains of money, and tells him about a plan where he would be calling and ambushing a drug dealer connected to P.O., who goes by the name of Premier Huang. Lee accepted his offer. During the ambush, Lee and Pham shot into Primo's Lexus and killed his girlfriend alongside him after shooting 19 bullets. After the shooting, they dipped out of there in Pham's car, which was being driven by another man. They would then break apart the guns and dispose of them in different areas. They also burned all their clothes and pissed on themselves to get rid of the gunpowder residue. After all of that, Pham moved to Vancouver, breaking all of his alleged promises about selling tons of drugs with Lee. Lee was found guilty for the first degree murder of Primo and manslaughter for his girlfriend. He was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for 25 years. And that's when the police started to connect the dots. They uncovered a history of the beef between the Chin Pack and the Asian assassins, dating all the way back to 2011, three years before Primo's murder. According to police intelligence, the beef started with a fistfight between a Chin Pack member and a Project Originals member that took place in jail. Not too long after, a fight between an Asian Assassin's member and a Sick Thugs member took place as well, also in jail. From 2011 to 2018, the police suspect that there have been at least 11 murders and a lot more shootings, relating to the beef between the Chin Pack and the Asian Assassins. The Asian Assassins and the Chin Pack were involved in a couple famous shootings as well. The alleged former leader of the Asian Assassins was shot and killed outside the Yorkdale Mall in 2013, along with his associate who was shot as well, but fortunately had survived. Witnesses say that they did nothing to provoke the shooting and didn't fire back, but were there just to shop and get some food. However, both men had a criminal record, so the police deemed it as a targeted shooting due to gang violence. Another well-known shooting was a shooting in 2018, where an alleged Chin Pack member was shot and killed in a bowling alley, along with an innocent bystander who had nothing to do with the situation. What makes the situation even more sad is that the alleged Chin Pack member's father was killed as well, four years earlier. He had no criminal record and was a 64-year-old gardener who was killed because a shooter shot right when the door to their house opened and was expecting the alleged Shinpak member to open the door, but actually ended up shooting his father instead. 
Throughout the course of this war, more than 94 members of these gangs have been arrested from the operations Project RX and Project Battery for criminal organization related charges, trafficking of firearms, drugs, and humans, and also for robberies, shootings, homicides, and firearm possessions. The story in Beef is crazy to me because of the violence this beef between these Asian gangs has caused with them not being well known around the city. Also the story of how the cops uncovered the history of this beef and got the confession for the double homicide which killed Primo and his girlfriend seems like something straight out of a movie. It's just crazy. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more in the future. Also leave a comment letting me know what videos you want to see next and also any feedback for my videos in general or just to shit talk me. Thanks for watching and have a good one.